you. I'm in. Hello, hello. I'm on. Let me just double check. I am. Brilliant. Hi, everybody. How are you today? Cool. So I'm Matty, as you should know. Um, this is your key third keyboard lesson this week. Um, so make sure you've got your keyboard out in front of you, get a water bottle, get anything you need. Um, I just need to read this out. So if you're under 18, tell your parents that you're doing this session. Feel free to ask questions and make comments, but stay safe online by just using your first name. Don't give out your contact details, and I hope you enjoy today's session. Brilliant. So I'll be watching along with the comments. So if you have any comments, you can get involved with as well. Um, feel free to ask away, ask any questions. Cool. So, just gonna sort this out because it's a bit covering up my keyboard, which isn't nice. There we go. Bro. And I'm gonna shut that window because I'm smashing some bottles. Okay. So, week three, exciting, very exciting. Um, so, last week, what did we look at? We looked at at the end of last week we said we know what a chord is, we know about tones and semitones, we know about two different types of chords, the major and minors, we can figure out how to play major and minor chords, um, we can play the root notes and chords using two hands, so the root notes in the left hand and the chord in the right hand like that. And we also learn how to play Where Is The Love by the Black Eyed Peas. Um, that, that was brilliant, so if you all got through that, that's amazing. So. Already, screen's going down. Oh, that's loud. <laughs> it made me jump. There we go. It's game time. Congratulations. So it's game time already. We're going to do a little refresher of last week, see what you can remember, see how you're doing. So, question one. What are these examples of? So there's spaces between notes. Okay. Time starts now. Can you tell me what these are examples of? So we looked at this last week. Think about that if you can't really remember. What are these examples of? Okay, time is up. The answer is semitones. So if you got that, yay. yay, you get a point. Yes, so it's one step away, a note between each other, nothing in between, just one step. Semitones. Brilliant. So, we learned two types of chord last week, I've already told you. Um, but still, what are the two types of chords that we learned? Okay, time starts now. I'm gonna lower you a tiny bit. What are the two types of chords that we learned last week? Okay, time is up. The answer is major and minor. So if you got that, yay, you get a point. Congratulations. Okay. So next question. There are three notes in a minor chord. What are those three notes called? Okay. So there's three notes. Can you remember what those three notes were called? They had specific names. Okay. Time's nearly up. So the answer is, first one is the root note. So if we're doing C minor, let's pretend we are. Here's the root note. Second one is the minor third, because we're playing a minor chord. Okay, and then the last one is the fifth. So all together, that's how you get your minor chord, you play those three notes. The root note, the minor third, and the fifth. So if you got that, Yay. Yay! You get a point. Congratulations. So, can you remember how to play Where Is The Love along with me? So, here he is. It's Will I Am. Wearing a Lego hat. Remarkable. Okay, so here are the chords in front of you. Don't know if you can hear the drums, but you'll play along with me. I'll count you in. So get your hands ready. Your little finger on the C down here. One, two, three. Killing people, dying, children hurt, you hear them cry. Will you practice what you preach? Will you turn the other cheek? Father, 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 help us. Will it 
some guidance from above Cause people got me, got me questioning Where is the love? Bro, so if you could do that, congratulations um, Good job everyone So if you're comfortable with all that Keep sticking with this lesson If you're not, you might want to go back The link should be in the description um, And there's first week as well if you're even struggling with that But if you're okay with that, then feel free to carry on or feel free to pause and get yourself together. Brilliant. So today is lesson three, as I was saying. What we are looking at today, so last week we looked at chords and we're going to take that a bit further, so look at some more in-depth harmony. So we're looking at broken chords and inversions. And I know what you're thinking, why do you want to break my beautiful chords? You've just learned these lovely chords, you've learned how to play them, you can sort of, you start playing songs. Um, and now you say, why do you want to break them? And this is you, you're feeling sad about this. It's getting you down. So the answer to that is, uh, it's something to do. No, there's there's serious reasons to it. What broken chords can do, they can add rhythm to your music, they can, um, it can draw more attention to the piano when you're playing it, it can improve your finger placement, breaking stuff is fun, and also it can add texture to your music. So there are very valid reasons to do it. Okay, so you feel a bit better now, and you're saying, okay, so what are broken chords? Got a bit of an open mind about this. So a broken chord is a chord where the notes are played individually. So not together, last time we were playing like. A broken chord would be like. Individual notes. Okay. So if we take C for an example, Last time we were playing it like this. So you see along the bottom, there's one, two, and three, four. And you've got to imagine that's me counting along, so that's time passing. Good. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's how we were playing chords last week, which is brilliant. But today, we're going to try and make them look like this. So if you can follow along, where it's one, two, three, four, it's going one, two, We're going to get more um, to grips with these sort of ways of playing chords today. So, how we do that, you get your C major, and you remember you use your three fingers, your thumb, your middle finger, and your little finger, one, three, and five. And then when we're playing it, we play it individually. So it's one, and then it's three, and then it's five, three. And then if you play that together, That's what it looks like now when we're playing. Okay, so we're going to do the same with G major. The notes are G, B, and D in this chord. Okay, so if we get on our keyboard, find our G major. extra arm or you've got a friend with you um, you can play it as many hands as you want but you're just playing this so that's the first kind of broken chord we're learning it can be anything it can sound like um, but this is what we're learning now to start with I'm very warm I do apologize if I'm sweating and drinking a lot of water through this I'm right next to my window okay so that's what it looks like now when we're playing the G major chord. If we're playing it as a broken chord, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, 
So we'll do the same with a minor chord now. So we're taking an A minor and the notes were A, C and E. So put your hand in an A minor position. Uh, it's the same again. One, three, five, three. And we go. And that is your A minor broken chord. So exactly the same, major and minor. You just play in the notes individually. Fantastic. So, the screen is going dark. What does that mean? Oh yeah, it's game time again. It's not as loud for me this time. I don't know how that was for you. But yeah, it's game time. So, get your hands ready. The first question is, what is a broken chord? Is it A, a chord that doesn't quite sound right? Is it B, a chord with notes that are played individually? Or is it C, Animal Crossing New Horizons for Nintendo Switch? Okay, time starts now. So what is a broken chord is the question. There are three answers you can choose from. One of them should be pretty obvious that it's not the right answer, especially since I used it for every question last week. Okay, so time's running out. Did you get it right? The answer is B. So if you got B, a uh, chord with notes that are played individually. Yay. Yay. You get a point. Congratulations. And we've got keyboard Katie back, who we all love. Okay, next question. Which one of these diagrams shows a broken chord? Which one of them is a broken chord? It's A or B. So there's two options to choose from. Think along the bottom, the one, two, three, four is me counting and the time passing along. Okay, so time is up. The yay. answer is A. So if you got A, yay. yay, you get a point. Congratulations. Brilliant. So now I want you to go on your keyboard in front of you and play a C major broken chord using the way we learned before. So the one, three, five, three. I want you to do that, okay? So time starts now. So we've gone your keyboard in front of you. I want you to play a C major as a broken chord using the same method that we've just learned. Okay. So time is running out. And the okay. So if you're playing this or Playing the notes C, E, and G, and then back to E. Then yay, yay! You get a point. Congratulations. If not, we'll go through that again. So what we did, we got a C major chord, and this is how we were playing it last week. So we're just going two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So all together we're playing it, and we're changing it into this. So how we did that, we got a C major chord, one, three, five, put your fingers on, and you're playing one, three, five, three, and it turns into that. So if you got that, congratulations. Now I want you to do the same thing, find an A minor and play it as a broken chord on your keyboard in front of you, okay? So time starts now. So try and remember what we just did if you're struggling a bit. Find your A minor and then it's a da, ha, 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 ha. Oh, I am sweaty, I'm so sorry. Okay, so time is up. This is what it should sound like. And it should look like that. So if you got that. Yay. Yay! You get a point. Congratulations. So we'll go through how we did that if you were struggling at all. So we got our A minor and uses A, C and E. And then we put our fingers in the right position. So your thumb is number one, middle finger is playing the minor third, and your little finger is playing the fifth. That's what it should sound like. So we're going one, three, five, three, and then playing it. So if you're hearing that, you've got the right answer, and you should have it now following those steps. If you're struggling, feel free to pause it, go back and try and figure it out so you're a bit more comfortable with it going forward. Okay, so now I want you to play an F major as a broken chord on your keyboard. 
don't think we've gone through this one yet, so you might have to work it out or remember how we did it. So we're looking for an F major as a broken chord on your keyboard in front of you. Okay, so that's what it should sound like. So if you've got that one, two, three, That's what it sounds like then. Yay, yay, you've got a point. So if you're playing F, A, C, and A, you've got the right point. You've got the you've done it well. Well done. <laughs> okay, so how we did that, we got our F chord made up of three notes, F, A, and C. And before we we're playing them like this, but now we're turning it into one, three, five, three. And together it's So good job everyone, if you did well there, feel free to carry on, if not feel free to pause it and just get your head around it a bit more, everyone goes at their own pace and that's fine. So we're going to go back to Where Is The Love by the Black Eyed Peas last week. So if you remember that, we're playing. So we're doing that. Um, here are the chords we had in front of us, but we're going to change it into this to broken chords. So how we do that, if we take our hand back, your left hand is going to say the same. So you're still playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. With our right hand now, we're not going to go, we're going to go. <laughs> so we're going to put those chords together, um, broken chords together. Um, so it's going to look a bit like this. So these are the notes you're playing with your right hand. If you're struggling with your left hand at the minute, don't worry about it, just focus on your right hand. So that's what we're practicing today. So it's going to sound like this. as you can tell but that's what we're gonna play so we're gonna try and play that along with the lyrics okay how am I doing I've got the whole thing okay so if you play along with me one two one two three four You can see what that does, so we're not just playing the same. We're playing it with a bit more rhythm, and we're getting used to using the right hand to play notes separately. Um, so together, it's really handy to learn, and it can make it sound a bit more interesting as well. Brilliant. So today we're looking at inversions as well. Inversions. So. What on earth is an inversion, you may be saying? An inversion is a chord with rearranged notes. So how we're playing, like a C major before, we're playing C, E, G. But 
you can play a C major in a lot of different ways. You can play it like this. This. And they're both C major still. They're just played in different inversions. So I'm going to go through that again and make it look a bit clearer. So we're getting our C major chord, and that's made up of these three notes. C, E, and G. Okay. So we get on the keyboard again, and we play C, E, G. But if we take the C and put that note on the top, so now it's E, G, C, and the E is at the bottom. So we're playing this chord. That becomes a C major in its first inversion. So you can see how the notes are still the same, they're just arranged differently. So the E is on the bottom now, so it's in its first inversion. But if we do it again, put the E on the top, and the G is on the bottom, and play this chord, it becomes a second inversion. Okay. So it's still a C major chord again, but we've just got an E on the top and the G on the bottom. So it might get a bit used to getting used to playing these chords like this. So we're going to go through quite a few. Okay. So another thing to remember is your finger positioning or fingering, as it's actually called, believe it or not. Um, it changes a bit when you play these inversions. So for me, when I play a C major in its normal form, I'm playing one, three, five, and then when I play this C major in its first inversion with E G C. See how I use one, my first finger, my thumb, my second finger this time, instead of my middle finger, and then my little finger stays there as well. So there's always my first and my thumb and my little fingers there, but I'm gonna change between my second finger, third finger, and fourth finger. So in a normal position, it's one, three, five. First inversion, it's one, two, five. And then in my second inversion, it's one, four, five. that again with a G. So the notes in a G, G chord, G major, E, G, B and D. So we play our normal G major in the first position. Now I'm going to put the G on the top and the B is on the bottom so it's sounding like this. So what have I done there? I've made it a first inversion. So it's the first inversion of G major. If I do this again, putting the B on the top and the D is on the bottom now. We've got here, we've got our second inversion. Okay. So if we remember it correctly, I'll go through it. So oh. So your G major standard. B on the bottom, G on the top. You got your first inversion, D on the bottom, and then B on the top got our second inversion so the notes are the same just rearranged okay if you're struggling with that at all please leave me a message on here um, I can explain it further so we're gonna look at a more complicated chord now we're using the black notes as well and we're gonna play a C sharp minor okay so that's C sharp B and G if you want to find an easier way to get there play a C major chord and then take your thumb and put it up one one semitone and take your little finger and put that up one semitone as well. So you should be playing C sharp, E and G. So the notes here. And that's a C sharp minor. It's a nice chord. Okay, so we could do the same again. We put the C sharp on the top so the E's at the bottom. First inversion. Okay, now if we do it again, G sharp on the bottom, and now your E's on the top. You got your second inversion. So you can see it's the same chord, just been rearranged. Okay. The screen is going dark. What does that mean? Yeah, baby, it's game time. So, first question is what is an inversion? Is it A, a chord with rearranged notes? Is it B, a chord with notes that are played individually? Or is it C, spend an entire day in quarantine just watching The Simpsons? Okay, time starts now. Is it A, 
B or C? And the question is, what is an inversion? So time is running out. Can you remember what an inversion is? Okay, the answer is A. So it's a chord with rearranged notes. So if you got that, yay, yay, you get a point. Congratulations. Okay, now I want you to play a C chord, C major, in its first inversion. Okay, the time starts now. So it might help if you just play a C, a normal position C first, and then go from there. Um, you might remember the notes, what it is already. Will you get there? So time's run out. So you should be playing B, G, C, B, G, C. So you should be playing it like that. You can play here or here. Either one's fine. So if you got that, yay, yay. You got a point. Congratulations. So how we did that, we got a normal C major chord. Took the C and put it on the top and the E, so the E's on the bottom. And remember that makes it your first inversion. So now I want you to take that C chord again and put it in its second inversion. Okay. So time starts now. Once you'll be able to get the first inversion, try and think of how you could figure out the second inversion from there if you're struggling. You might just remember it, some people do, some people need to practice it a bit more. Okay, so time is up, and it should look like this. So if yours sounds like that, and you're playing G, C, and E, in that order, yay, you get a point. Congratulations. So how we did that, we got our C major chord in its normal position. Put the E on the bottom and the C on the top to make first inversion. And then we did it again, put the E on the top so the G's on the bottom. And it became the second inversion. Brilliant. So now I want you to play a G major chord in its second inversion. Okay. So use the same technique, but we're using a G major chord now. Okay, so time is up. Can you do that? So you should be playing B, G, and B. Brilliant, so if you're playing that, D, G, and B, and it sounds like that. Yay, yay, you get a point. Congratulations. So we'll go through that again. So we found our normal G major chord. G on top and the B on the bottom, what does that give us? Gives us our first inversion. Okay, and then we did it again, put the B on the top and the D on the bottom, and we got our second inversion. So that's how we got there. So it should be D, G, and B. It's a nice chord. Okay, now I want you to play a D minor in its first inversion. Okay, so time starts now. It's a minor chord. I don't think we did this one, but it's not that hard. You can still do it. Use the same methods as we've been using before. So a D minor in its first inversion. Time is up. It should sound like this. So if you're playing that, the notes F, A, and D in that order. Yay. Yay. You get a point. Congratulations. So we'll go through how we found that. Sorry. So we found a D minor chord, D, F, A. And then what do we do to get our first inversion? We put the D on the top, so the F's on the bottom, and that's our first inversion. So that first inversion so if you got that well then and good job so if you're doing really well on those that's brilliant and we're going to move forward and keep them in mind if you're struggling feel free to take a bit of time just to get to grips with them um, and try and practice them a bit more before moving on 
so now we're going to look at a training exercise oh yeah brilliant so this training exercise is going to mix inversions and broken broken chords you get into the point where you, when you're practicing it's going to sound a bit more musical than finding notes now and this is a really good exercise to get there so what we're going to do is we're going to take our C major play in normal position and we're playing it as a broken chord but without the third so we're playing it in threes it's one two three and then we're moving our fingers to the second inversion the first inversion sorry and it goes so again I'll do it slower so one two three then we're going to move our fingers into the third inversion and then we're going to land on the C so all together that first bit sounds like this. You always want to finish on the note you're starting with, it just sounds neat when you're doing exercises like this. And then we're going to reverse what we've just done. So it's going to go backwards now, so instead of starting on your thumb, you're starting on your little finger. And it sounds like... And then we move it to... the first inversion now we're back into normal position and then we land on the C okay so this is what it looks like when you see the notes lined up so it's one two three 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Um, try play this with both hands as well if you can uh, so it will sound Try and play it with different chords as well, so you can play it with G. Um, and then once you've got the hang of that, you can just play it with di all around the keyboard, and it can sound quite nice. So you can do a. So it might seem a bit complicated at first, but once you've got the hang of it, you'll be able to play it anywhere on the keyboard, and it'll sound really nice, and you can use that for writing, you can get your hands working a bit more, it helps you with stretching, helps with well, how hard you're pressing the keys. Um, it's a really good exercise to get the hang of. So you're doing root position, first inversion, second inversion, second inversion, first inversion, root position, and then you're playing it as a broken chord. So one, two, three, one, So yeah, I'll show you we're doing it with a G as well. So you get your hand in a G major position. Thumb on your G, middle finger on your B, little finger on the D. So we're going D, 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 and then we're going to move our hands so your fingers are first, second and fifth finger. Going B, D, G, it's first inversion. Then we're moving it again, so using your fourth finger in the middle this time, and you're doing B, D, B, and then G. Then we're doing it backwards. So all together that looks like this. It's really interesting as well because if you wanted to take this further and do your exams, do your grading or things like that, this is the sort of stuff you'll probably be asked to play. So it's really it handy learning it, it's really good for just getting your hands in the right place and playing with the right fingers. Okay, so now we're going to look like, look at Adele's song, Someone Like You. And here she is, Adele, absolutely fantastic, with her microphone pointing in the complete opposite direction. She doesn't really know how to use it. Okay, so in this song there are four chords and it sounds like this. 
So if you hear what I'm playing, what does that sound like? It sounds like earlier when we were playing our broken chords. And this song is just made up of broken chords and it has inversions as well. So the C sharp is in an inversion and the D is in an inversion as well. So with our left hand, we're going to learn the left hand first. Get your thumb, your first finger, and play an A. So when you play in the A chord, play in When you're playing the C sharp minor, use your second finger and put it on the G sharp. So if you're playing a C sharp minor with a C sharp not in the bass, what does that tell you it could be? Thinking about what we've done before. So that's there because it's an inversion. So we go in and then C sharp minor in a second inversion. But we were thinking about that. So just your second finger on the G sharp or an A flat, however you're seeing it. Middle finger on F sharp minor, F sharp when you're playing an F sharp minor. And then put your little finger on D for your D major chord. So what's good about this is in your right hand you're playing it as an inversion, you're playing it in its second inversion again. Because the D major D is still in the bass, it's still in its root position. So together we're going to play them together. So it sounds a bit like this. I'll go through it again with the pictures. So thumb on A. Ready? One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. Together, A, G sharp, F sharp, D, and D, 4, and 2, 3, 4. So play along with me. Do the right hand now. We're going to play an A A chord, A major. It's a normal position, but we're playing it as a broken chord, so it sounds like. Okay, so we're playing it uh, as so. So if we're playing it together, it'll be like. Playing it a bit faster than we played it before. It's not just one, two, three, four. It's one, two, three, So you're playing two notes between each beat, but you're still playing the same. Okay. Um, and then to go to the C sharp minor, all we're doing is taking our thumb and putting it on the G sharp. Okay. So you're playing your A chord and you move your thumb down one, down one semitone. And um, that's because it's in it and it's an inversion. Can you tell me which inversion that is? It is in its second inversion. Okay. So we're playing it like that. So one, two, three, four. So 
with that, we're playing on F sharp minor. Uh, we're not playing, we're playing this a bit differently, so it might be quite a big stretch for your hands, especially if you're not used to playing the keyboard much. But we're going to play it like this. So you're noticing, you might notice there's two F sharps in our hand here. That's okay. So we're playing F sharp with our thumb, C sharp with your middle finger, and then F sharp again with your little finger. So. so this is a different type of chord we've not really looked at. Um, it would be classed as a fifth chord or a power chord you might hear it as. Um, it means it's no third in it, so it's a mitten the third. Depends in what context you're doing. So it could be cinematic music, it'd be written as a mitted third. Um, rock music could be a power chord. It's just how it depends what, how you hear it. It depends, it's different different language for different kinds of music. But essentially it's still an F sharp minor chord. So don't worry about that too much. So you're playing in two hands, two F sharps and a C sharp in the middle. Okay, and then for the last chord, we'll change into a D. What's that? It's in an inversion. Can you tell me what inversion it is? So the D's not on the bottom, and the F sharp's not on the bottom, the A is. So that tells you it's in its third in a second inversion, so. Okay. So we're gonna put them together now. So if you get your left hand and you're ready, your thumb on your A, and it's gonna sound like this. feel like this is particularly suited to me but I'm just I can't complain every time I have to see so let's try and do that together we're gonna start it with an introduction of just going through the chords once and then I'll come in and sing okay so we're just gonna play the start to this song so okay so one two three four <laughs> start to someone like you the girl. that is fantastic so we've gone through quite a lot of stuff today it's been quite complicated compared to I think the last two lessons it's quite more musical so if you struggle don't worry it's it's something you might need to just play along and practice a bit um, but if you've not that's fantastic as well well done so at the end of today we can now say we know what a broken chord is 
We can play lots of different kinds of broken chords or lots of broken chords. We know about inversions, we know what they are. We can play major and minor chords in their first and second inversions. Um, we know a training exercise to improve your broken chord and inversions. Um, and we can play the song Someone Like You by Adele. So, as I say every week, I want you to practice a few minutes every day. 15 minutes a day is better than two hours for one day than putting it off for the rest of the week. Things you can practice I think would be good are just getting to know your inversions a bit more so you don't have to figure them out. You can just play them. So if I say play a C major in its second inversion, you can just get up and do it like that. Um, another thing to do is practice the exercise. So the That's really handy to practice, so practice that for a few minutes every day. Um, and then play around with what you've learned. So even if you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't have to sound perfect straight away. No, nothing ever does. So just play around with broken chords and inversions. Um, and just write a bit of music you might like. Just whatever you're doing, if you like the sound of it or you're just enjoying yourself, that's way more important. There's no point learning the piano if you're not enjoying it, or the keyboards. Okay, so also I want you to comment below any songs you might want to learn in the future. So we'll be looking a bit more into songs. So if you've got any other songs you want to learn in the future, um, let me know. And until then, I'll see you next week. So it'll be same again, Friday, 4 o'clock. Not sure what we'll be doing. I think we'll be looking into scales and melody a bit more. And then trying to play chords with one hand and melodies with the other hand. Um, so it'll be really good. So once you get, you're getting really good at this now. If you've been keeping up with these lessons, um, you should be able to see a massive difference in where you've started. You've done a lot. You've learned a hell of a lot if you've got them together. Um, so yeah, that's fantastic. I will see you next week. Anything you need from me, feel free to leave a comment. Um, if you enjoy the session, leave a comment, leave a like. Do what you want to do. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next week.